So fistula is, in ano is also known as anal fistula or anorectal fistula. It's an epithelialized communication between the rectum or anal canal and perianal region. So this is an example of a fistula. Its most common etiology is a cryptoglandular infection or an infected anal crypt gland. So please refer to the picture. So other causes include For the epidemiology, the true prevalence of anal fistula is unknown. Incidence is 15 to 38%. Mean age is 40 years old and adult males are two times more affected than females. For the pathogenesis, so the origin is usually at the anal crypt. So the anal crypt becomes infected and an abscess becomes formed. So the abscess will try to create a tract in order for it to drain. So this tract will create communication with the perirectal skin up until it ruptures. So the tract is epithelialized and so that will be called a fistula. Clinical features or the manifestations in a patient are as follows. Anorectal abscess, purulent discharge, and pustule-like lesion. Patients may present with rectal pain as well. Malodorous perianal drainage and perianal pruritus. Well, for the physical examination findings, inflamed or excoriated perianal skin, induration just below the skin, and tenderness or inflammation. So the following may be done depending on the need and its availability, while DRE as shown in the picture is done for every patient with an abscess or anorectal fistula to assess for an indolent or incompletely drained abscess. Diagnosis is primarily based upon characteristic findings on history and PE. Imaging studies are not required for diagnosis of simple fistula. However, this may be essential or important for complex or recurrent fistulas. MRI and endosonography are the preferred imaging studies. So external opening is often easily identifiable. It's because it's palpable and usually indurated. While the internal opening is more challenging to identify and so a knowledge of the good cells rule is important. So it will serve as a guide. So this is the good cells rule, one of the most commonly cited principles to assist in the surgical management of an anal fistula. So just to orient you, this is the transverse anal line. So this is the posterior anterior and these are the external openings of the fistula. So the first rule states that the external openings within 3 cm of the anal verge and posterior to this transverse line will travel in a curvilinear fashion to the posterior midline. So this is the external opening and it will travel to the posterior midline in a curvilinear fashion. All tracks with external openings anterior to the transverse anal line will enter the canal in a radial fashion. So this is anterior opening and it will go through the um, anal canal in a radial fashion. And lastly, fistula tracts that are longer than 3 cm from the anal verge do not follow the good cells rule. They often have an internal opening in the posterior midline, so they would have their opening in here regardless of the location of the external opening. So good cells rule is often quoted, however, it may not always be accurate. For the management, it's one of the most challenging and controversial topics in colorectal surgery. However, surgery is the mainstay of therapy with the ultimate goal of draining the abscess, eradicating the fistula, avoiding recurrence, and preserving the sphincter function. This is the management algorithm for cryptoglandular fistulas. The abscess is initially treated through incision and drainage. Later on, it will be observed for persistence or drainage. If persistence, an anorectal fistula is suspected, for which further surgery is indicated. So examination under anesthesia in order to determine whether the fistula is simple or complex. What makes a fistula complex is the involvement of the um, anal sphincter. So more than 30% of the sphincter complex involved. So the classification 
of anal fistulas as described by Parks Gordon and Hardcastle is the most common manif um, classification used. It describes the fistula tracts and predicts the complexity. So Parks type 1 intersphincteric is the most common, 45%. It begins at the dentate line and ends at the anal verge. It tracks along the intersphincteric plane and it terminates in the perianal skin. Parks type 2 or transphincteric. So it encompasses the internal and the external sphincter. So it is. And parks type 3 or suprasphincteric. It originates at the anal crib and encircles the entire sphincter apparatus. Parks type 4 or extra sphincteric, it's very high in the anal canal and encompasses the entire sphincter apparatus, so is the levators. So for the management, most fistulas are treated with a fistulotomy. A fistulotomy is a procedure where the skin and muscle over the tract, fistula tract is cut open so this will allow drainage and healing of the tract from inside out. So on the other hand, simple fistulas that are associated with these diseases are treated with the draining seton, similar to the treatment of complex fistulas. So I'll show a video of a draining seton. So this is a draining seton. So it makes use of a thread that is inserted through the fistula and loosely tied outside. So this will allow the abscess to drain and it will remain in place for more than six weeks. So from there, from the draining seton, a procedure based on fistula anatomy and surgeon reference will be chosen.